Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Krishna Kishore, uh, consultant laparoscopic and robotic GI surgeon at uh, Kim Saigon Hospital, Vishakhapatnam. Today, I'm going to discuss about the gallstone disease, its complications, and uh, all the factors related to the gallstone disease. Uh, first of all, uh, before getting into the topic, uh, I would like to uh, mention a few general principles of any disease. So, uh, in the general principles, if you understand the pathology of the disease, we can prevent the disease. So, prevention is better than cure. So, as much as possible, it will, uh, we have to take all the measures to prevent the disease. The another important aspect of is to un understand the disease to get a better treatment and get a better treatment. So once you get a better understanding, you can cooperate, uh, get into the treatment options with your uh, proper understanding and uh, can get relieved easily. That is our concept. The other thing is every disease has got uh, a spectrum. In the sense, uh, everything, every disease starts as a mild disease, becomes a moderate disease and becomes a severe disease with much more severe complications in the end, which can lead to a severe morbidity or a mortality. So it all in the, your uh, uh, recovery rates and your hospital stay or the cost of the treatment, everything is dependent on the stage of the disease where the, you diagnose yourself or go to uh, reach the doctor in time, in which stage of the disease you reach the doctor. So you uh, understanding the disease also helps you to uh, diagnose yourself at the right time and to get a better treatment, to have a better recovery rate and also to cut down the cost of the treatment. So these are the general principles. One is prevention of the disease and better treatment of the disease. And also you can get yourself diagnosed in the right time in the uh, early part of the spectrum of the disease. So all these things we need understanding of a disease. That is why we need to understand what are the common problems that we encounter in life. So one of these is the gall gallstone disease. It's a pretty common disease. Um, every you know, female in uh, about 40 years of age uh, is at risk for a gallstone disease. That is the commonest age and gender where the gallstone disease occurs. So understanding the uh, general principles, let us get into the topic first. In, the, uh, in understanding the gallstone disease, we will uh, divide into four or five topics like uh, what are gallstones, what are the causes of the gallstones, and how, how it presents, that is, symptoms of the gallstone disease and its complications, how to get treated, it, like what are the latest options available to get it treated. And the other thing is uh, preventive aspect. What else we can do to prevent the gallstone formation? That's all. So in the gallstone, uh, what is a gallstone? So it is a kind of clump of materials, solid materials within the bile in the uh, biliary tract. That is, it can be liver or it can be a duct, there is a common bile duct which carries the bile from the liver into the intestine or in the gallbladder. It is one of the side outpouchings from the, uh, the duct which carries the bile from the liver into the uh, intestines. So, in, a, in, a, in a, the gallstone can form in any part of this biliary tract. So, the, uh, how does it form? It's basically bile contains uh, cholesterol, bile pigments, electrolytes, water. So, whenever the concentration of these different parts of this bile or different components of the bile changes, then the gallstones form. So once if the cholesterol becomes an, an excessively present in the bile, then the cholesterol settles and forms the cholesterol stones. If the bile pigment increases in the um, bile, the content of the bile pigments is more, then it forms the bile, uh, the pigment stones. So in the bile and gallbladder stones, there are two varieties. One is cholesterol stone and the other is the pigment stones. Out of these two, the cholesterol stones are more common. So the, when, a, uh, when, a, when the concentration is to change, it, either it should be high or the concentrated capabilities of the gallbladder should be inefficient. That is how it runs. So the, what are the, any condition which can increase the cholesterol in the bile can result in cholesterol gallstones or a bile pigment increase like uh, cirrhosis, infections of the liver or any other parasitic infections or cumulative disorders, all these things can cause the pigment stones. So, 
we have understood what is a gallstone and we also understood what is a uh, how to how the what are the types of the gallstones and uh, how where do they form and what uh, how do they form that is what we understood that is pathophysiology of the gallstones the next um, uh, important uh, aspect is uh, what harm it can cause and how does uh, it present to us so the person with the gallstone most of them are asymptomatic that is if 180 percent of them are like asymptomatic so if uh, 100 people have gallbladder stones 80 percent will not have any symptoms only 20 percent will have symptoms so what about the, the, we will be discussing how these 20 percent of the people who have symptoms present to us is like the most common symptom is pain in the right upper abdomen that is just below the rib case on the right side and the patient can also present with fever and chills fever and chills the patient can also present with jaundice so these are the different symptoms so in the presentation of the disease class 26 we can divide it into uh, different aspects like a biliary colic where there will be only pain or an acute cholecystitis where an associated infection is there or a chronic cholecystitis where, where the pain problem becomes chronic for more than three to six months and we and it also can cause associated complications like cholangitis and pancreatitis these are the various aspects of the presentation of the gallstone disease. So, um, when do we say it is a biliary colic? If the pain is in the right upper abdomen, boring type of pain, lasting for four to six hours, and mostly after a um, fatty meal intake and radiating to the back without any fever and chills, then we call it as a biliary colic. And the next uh, presentation is acute gallicles pulse status, where the presentation in the patient will also be associated with infection. So one of the stones which is in the biliary tract or in the gallbladder obstructs the cystic duct. That is the duct which connects the gallbladder with the uh, common bile duct. Then it results in accumulation of the fluids within the gallbladder and there may be an associated infection and that can result in inflammation of the gallbladder. That is acute calculus cholecystitis. That also presents with pain as we discussed in um, the biliary pulp, but this pain is sharp pain, and the pain is also associated with fever and chills and tigers. That is how an acute cholecystitis presents. And if that uh, becomes much more serious, it can result in the ganglion of the gallbladder, then the uh, preparation of the gallbladder, where bile spills into the abdominal com compartment and results in per peritonitis. That is inflammation of the peritoneal surface of the abdominal cavity. The next presentation is chronic alcohol pulsistitis. So these acute pulsistitis features within their managed conservatively, they subside with antibiotics and other painkillers and antispasmodics. Finally, they will settle, but again, they reappear after two to three months. And this is a continuous process with repeated attacks, it can result in a chronic calculus pulsistitis. So the other aspects of the presentation are if one of the stones slips, slips down into the common bile duct, which is the main duct, which is carrying the bile from the liver into the intestines. When it is not obstructed, it can present in jaundice. They then jaundice and then the patient presents with uh, yellowish uh, uh, eyes and uh, the patient will have a uh, dark colored urine, that is yellowish urine and pale colored stools. Patient may also have itching. A person may also have itching. These are the uh, presentations so with the obstructing system uh, due to the gallbladder and the stone gallbladder stone which has to into the uh, common bile duct this condition in it and it, whenever the, uh, it is obstructed it also can cause uh, infection fever with sins and ritis then it is called as cholangitis so obstructive jaundice with cholangitis the uh, gallstone formation in the cbd uh, is known as polydopolithiasis polydopolithiasis with cholangitis and the, the and other presentation is when it slips down like this into the CPT and goes down, it can sometimes uh, obstruct the pancreatic duct also, which can result in pancreatitis. Between the pancreas and another organ, which uh, releases the um, required enzymes into the intestine for digestion. The, these are the varied presentations of the gallstones. And it also depends upon the site of the gallstone formation or slippage and varied forms. And these are the various presentations then it comes uh, the how do you diagnose whether the patient is having the 
what is your person is having, if it's a gallstone disease or not. So with all these uh, symptoms, we suspect that it could be a gallstone disease or it could have it could be polyangitis or a pancreatitis from the clinical examination and the symptoms that what the patient tells us. Then once we suspect, we will need to confirm it by with the other investigations, like we will go with the CBP, the complete blood picture, which gives us the information about the various, whether there is any infection which is uh, getting into the blood or not. And we also look into the liver functions, which gives an idea about whether the jaundice is there or not, whether the bilirubin is rising or not. And the next step, um, in other investigation is radiological imaging. That is like ultrasound, which gives an information about whether the gallstones are present in the gallbladder itself or uh, they slip down into the CBD. And we can also have a look at the wall of the gallbladder, or whether it is uh, element as infected or any medical cystic collections. Or we can also rule out the perforations. And we can also rule out uh, biliary pancreatitis. These are the various uh, conditions where they, which can be picked up on the ultrasound and uh, sometimes uh, uh, further investigation with the CTR and MRCP also helps us to better delineate the disease. So the, these are the various uh, uh, instruments and uh, investigations which, has, which help us in diagnosing the disease. Once the disease is diagnosed, then uh, we have to see if we get uh, treatment for the disease. So each, as I said, each disease has spectrum of uh, and it's a spectrum, and wherever the, the patient falls into which spectrum, the treatment options depend upon them. If the patient is having a uh, mild uh, biliary colic, and uh, the patient can, can, can be considered for uh, a simple lapal, lapal cystectomy. So, the cystectomies are of two types open full cystectomy and the laparoscopic full cystectomy. Open full cystectomy is a conventional method where the cut will be given under the rib case and the, the gallbladders will. Um, will be identified and removed. In laparoscopy, it will be done through small keyholes, which are uh, four keyholes made in the abdomen, uh, through which long instruments, which are then are sent inside and recommended to sent inside and the gallbladder will be removed. Like uh, acute pulse cystitis, uh, initially we have to treat with the uh, uh, IV antibiotics, settle down the infection, and uh, we can do the pulse cystitis if the patient presents within the first 72 hours in the index. Uh, presentation or we can go for an interval cystic cystic after six to eight weeks once everything settles down. And chronic cystitis, it is also um, the, the treatment option is full cystectomy at a convenient time and uh, timing of the surgery also depends upon the uh, patient condition. And biliary pancreatitis, we have to uh, treat the pancreatitis first and uh, full cystectomy can be done in the same index admission and uh, through laparoscopy. And cholangitis, the obstructive jaundice with cholangitis, there are various methods. These are in, in methods to relieve the, uh, remove the stone and relieve the cholangitis. So ESCP is one of the best options where an endoscope, side wing endoscope is passed through the, the um, uh, mouth into the duodenum, in the small bowl. And from where, uh, from there, it, when the, the CBD is cannulated and the stone in the CBD is removed, and a stand can be placed to relieve the cholangitis and the cholestatic may consider after some time. If the uh, stone cannot be removed through ERCP for various reasons, whether it cannot be cannulated or the stone is bigger to come out of the papilla, we, and there are other options uh, like the surgery, CBD exploration, laparoscopic cholestatic and laparoscopic CBD exploration. So these are the various methods and of uh, treatment, the options available for the treatment of the gallstones. And the next, the uh, thing is, uh, we have discussed the complications. We have uh, discussed the various uh, methods of treatment for the gallstone disease. So we can uh, how to prevent these gallstones. How the right would, how can we prevent the formation of the gallstones? So the uh, gallstones are usually uh, formed in people with uh, the dysmetabolism of the cholesterol. So cholesterol production and extra cholesterol production results in uh, the cholesterol uh, stone formation. So that can be prevented by a good exercise 30 minutes a day or by at least five to six days in a week and a good healthy diet where you reduce the sugars and reduce the fat content of the food and increase the fiber in the diet. And there are other conditions which are, can cause are associated with uh, uh, gallstone formation like uh, 
the uncontrolled diabetes. So you can also do the same return good exercise and the diet to control the diabetes, which also helps in prevention of formation of the uh, gallstones from uh, dismetabolism of the cholesterol. And also, you can uh, uh, the other uh, OCPs can also cause uh, gallstones. So whenever you have an associated other risk factor, you should need to contact the doctor to whether you can take the vesicles or not in the uh, plan for vesicles. So these are the various uh, options and uh, treatment options for the gallstone and preventive aspects of the gallstone. Now we can take any questions if you have. Any questions and queries that you have, uh, we can have on. Any queries? So uh, we can also discuss other aspects of the gallbladder diseases, uh, which can uh, happen with uh, the gallstones. They are other uh, diseases which can be associated with gallstones are uh, infections of the gallbladder, like MPM of the gallbladder, mucosal of the gallbladder, and uh, uh, the um, cancers of the gallbladder also associated with gallstone disease. Um, the MPMA of the gallbladder or mucosal of the gallbladder occurs with the stones obstructing the cystic duct and uh, the uh, fluids accumulate which can result in mucosal. If that fluids can get infected, it is MPMA of the gallbladder. And these can are commonly occur in, occur in, commonly occur in the diabetes and uh, diabetic people. So uh, once the, it occurs, if the patient is uh, stable and presenting within uh, uh, 72 hours and then a procedure to laparoscopical checking can, can, can be done. But if the patient is uh, sick and uh, the infection has spread into the blood and the patient is not fit, fit for surgery, then other options, intervention options like a percutaneous transhepatic cystostomy can be considered, whereby it will be placed from outside under the ultrasound guidance and the CT guidance into the gallbladder through the liver. And the pus is relieved, and uh, the patient settles. And for the patient can be considered for a definitive procedure after six to eight weeks. That is a laparoscopical cystectomy. For cancers of the gallbladder, uh, there are various options depending upon the stage of the gallbladder, the cancer where it was diagnosed. Any queries, uh, we can answer any queries that we have on the gallstone disease to understand better the gallstone disease. Yeah, 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 we can take any place that there are people have. No, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. 